So the Nikon ZF is out and it's pretty amazing. So first off, I'd just like to give a big shout out and thanks to Nikon Japan for providing me with this copy of the Nikon ZF. I need to mention that I'm not being paid for this video in any way, but they were kind enough to send me the body of the Nikon ZF so I can use it for a week and give you my thoughts and feelings about the camera. And one thing I really wanted to do with the camera was to go out and do a portrait session as portraits and taking pictures of people is actually a really big part of my professional work in Japan here as a professional photographer. And even though the Nikon Z9 is my workhorse camera and it's a very, very good camera, I'd really like to be able to use the Nikon ZF as a secondary camera that I can take along with my Z9 when I'm out in the field and things like that. So to be able to test out the various features of the Nikon ZF, I set up a portrait session with a model in downtown Tokyo. During our portrait session, there's four things I really want to keep in mind while using the Nikon ZF. First will be the implementation of the XSpeed 7 processor in this camera which allows for face detection and eye detection on the same level as my Nikon Z9. This is very impressive, and I'm interested to see how it will actually work out in the street in a real working environment. Number two, seeing online, there's a lot of people that have a kind of a negative reaction to the fact that this camera, the Nikon ZF, when it shoots 4K 60p video, which is very nice, it does so in a DX crop mode. So I'm interested to see is just how good is the video quality, even though it's shot in a DX crop mode, and it is something that I could use in my work for YouTube and my own personal things and working as a videographer from time to time and see if it's good enough for that level. Number three, the Nikon ZF has some new features that allow it to help when using manual focus. So I have a couple vintage manual focus lenses that I bought in Shinjuku for a couple hundred bucks. Very, very nice lenses, but I suck at manual focusing. So anything the camera can do that can help me improve my manual focusing is very, very appreciated. And I'm looking forward to see how well it can do and how much easier it makes it to use manual focusing when out in the field shooting a model. And lastly, like I said, I do have a Z9 and I've been using it so much over the last year and a half, I can basically use it blindfolded. But the ZF is a much more retro design with these knobs and wheels and things like that on the top of the camera. So I'm very curious to see how smoothly I can use the camera in kind of a high paced, I get nervous kind of situation of shooting a model in an hour in kind of a busy environment in downtown Tokyo. Yeah, so those are the four main things I'm looking at while using the camera during our portrait session. And it was a great session indeed. I had a lot of fun using the camera and I did a little edit as always so everyone can see what kind of things we got up to and the fun we had with our session. So yeah, check it out and I'll jump back into the video after it and let you know how everything went. Oh, he's... Nice. 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 Hmm. 
So, how did it do? The Nikon ZF, the new cool camera on the market kind of thing, but is it really worth it? Is it worth me maybe selling my D5 and picking one up to use as a second camera? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm really leaning over to the answer of yes on that. Just to go through what I was looking at when I was out shooting. So first thing that I mentioned there is the auto face and auto eye detect that the camera now has. Again, thanks to the X-Speed 7 processor and the autofocus algorithm that the Z9 enjoys. And man, it was great. I really had no instances where I was worried where the autofocus was, where it was, I was losing it, maybe it was jumping to back focus or anything like that. When I was shooting, I should mention that I basically had my autofocus setting to full the whole frame, not the 3D one, but just the whole frame and auto eye detect, uh, auto person detect set in the camera. And that way the camera knows what it's looking for. It's just looking for a person, one person, get on their eyes, and we just go and shoot. And I had no issues with the camera uh, the whole time. Focus was really, really quick very responsive. One thing I really noticed this time, maybe a lot more than in the past uh, iterations of the auto autofocus algorithm with the Z9, you know, there's been several updates since I bought it, so it's always improving. But I noticed that when the, my model was moving, the autofocus point moved very smoothly from the left to the right eye, depending on which eye was out front. You always want to have the closest eye to the camera be the one that the focus point is hitting and be in focus. And I noticed, you know, some cameras, it jumps back and forth a lot and it kind of gets me a little bit worried if it's actually focusing or not. But shooting with the ZF this time and the auto eye focus, it was really great. It really smoothly went from each eye when she was moving and stuff like that. It's really impressive for such a small camera to have such an impressive autofocus ability for face and eye tracking. I was really impressed quite a bit actually. <laughs> And, you know, with regard to the video I shot during our session, like I'm doing a little bit more video here and there for my YouTube again and for my professional work as well. So having a second camera that I can shoot video on would be great. And as you can see, the video we got was pretty amazing. I shot everything on 4K 60p because I like to do a little bit of slow motion when I'm editing things like that. Really, really looks nice. Very smooth. The DX crop, I... Uh, I honestly, when I was shooting the video, I kind of forgot that there was a DX crop on it that night. I was kind of like a little bit nervous for the shoot and rushing and doing kind of thing and just really wasn't had that in my mind when I was shooting. And I barely even noticed it when I was shooting at all. Like, you know, turn on the video and OK, I got to move back a little bit for this uh, frame or I got to move over here a bit for this frame because it's a little bit closer in. I wasn't ever like surprised or angry or, you know, I never make it shooting it any more difficult. And I think, you know, with the combination of the sensor, the lens I was using, I was shooting a lot with the 85 1.8 and beautiful, beautiful lens. And in general, uh, you know, the video I got looks great. I'm really happy with it. Uh, I'm not a video guy, so maybe somebody can point out a few things about the video. The actual quality of the video that you see that I've shot, that could be improved on. I'd love to hear about that. But for me, at my level of shooting right now, it looked great. I really enjoyed shooting it. And one thing, this camera, you know, it is smaller to say than my Z9 and with something like the 40 millimeter f2 or the 85 millimeter 1.8 they're smaller lenses that fit very very well balanced on the camera and I found I was really able to keep this camera steady and smooth when I was shooting handheld I don't have a gimbal everything you see that I put in the video was shot handheld so when the weight and the balance of the camera really helped me keep that steady and also this camera has five point axis of stabilization, I think, in the camera when shooting video as well. So that was really, really helpful as well and really helped me keep my shots nice and clean. And it really worked out for what I was doing. And I actually really like how the video looked. It looked really, really nice and it was fun to shoot. And I'm looking forward to maybe shooting some more video with this as well. So now using manual lenses on this, the Nikon ZF got just that much easier than before. I suck at manual focusing. So anything that kind of helped me manual focus my vintage 
Nikon 50mm 1.4 lens that I have, which I really like, uh, is a super bonus. I'm really, really happy about that. So what this camera can do is, while you have your vintage lens or your fully manual lens on the camera, the auto eye detect actually works. So you can see where the auto eye detect goes. You can see that eye point. For some reason, it just gave me a lot of confidence when I was trying to focus manually. And I think I got much better results than is if I was maybe trying to shoot manually on my Z9. And what's also really cool is when you punch in, you're using the camera with the manual lens and you hit the little plus magnifying glass here to punch in and double check your focus. It goes straight onto the face, straight onto where that auto eye focuses. So you can really like, don't have to play around and move around. Cause before it wouldn't go straight onto the eye. It just go some kind of other place in the middle of the, uh, the frame or something like that. But now it goes straight to the where it's auto eye focusing. And it's really super fast and super convenient. You can make a couple little tweaks there while looking at it, pop back out and take your photos. So this little improvement to shooting manual on these lens. Well, now you got this cool retro camera. I'm sure people have these cool retro lenses out there that they want to use with it. And this feature is a really simple feature. It really makes it a lot easier for people to drag out those older lenses and use it with this. Not only is it easier to use, but I'm sure it's going to look pretty cool with these old lenses on there as well. So yeah, that's a great little thing that Nikon did to this. And for me, as someone who's not confident in manual shooting, I think it's going to help me out a lot and make me bring out that 50mm 1.4 that much more in the future. And in general, you know, just the ease of use was great. I got used to the camera really quick. You know, okay, this is the ISO, this is the shutter speed, this is the aperture. Like, it's pretty basic stuff. It's not hard to get used to right away, even if you're used to other cameras. It's all very, very self explanatory just by looking at the camera and I don't know if it was just the amazing light we had the beautiful model or the 85 1.8 is an amazing lens or even the 105 1.4 I shot on is just another amazing lens or just a combination of everything but the photos I got during our portrait session just blew me away they look super nice I barely had to do any editing on them and everything I shot that night looked really really great I was super happy with the results there was nothing in the camera that caused me to lose time or to fumble or fart or anything like that. I think the only thing that made my shooting a little bit difficult was my own choice of memory card. So I think a lot of people like me probably have some memory cards laying around that we use for our GoPros and stuff like that. I'm actually using one of those cards as an adapter and using the micro SD card in there. It's something I have for my GoPro. I didn't really have time to pick up a nice memory card for this camera. But one thing I should mention here though is because I had kind of an old small it's 64 gigs, but it's still a slow card. I was only really able to shoot up to about 15 or 16 seconds of video before the camera farted out on me and told me I had to stop. I think it's just because the memory card sucked and it was couldn't handle the load of information going into it. If you're like me and you do have a couple memory cards laying around, uh, it's great for the first little bit and it worked okay for the photos. But once I got to shoot in video, especially the 4K 60P, the crappy little memory card I had just couldn't cut it and I could only take up to 15 seconds of video. So. If you're getting a camera, invest in a nice memory card as well, especially if you're taking video, it'll just help you out so much more in the long run and it'll just be so stress-free, it's not even funny. <laughs> I was getting quite annoyed actually and I was a little bit pissed off at myself for using such a crappy memory card. So another thing that actually was really helpful with this camera, then actually even maybe even better than my Z9, is when taking photos, it has an eight point internal stabilization. So you can actually bring your shutter speed down, they say eight stops lower than maybe you normally be shooting at. So, you know, when we started shooting, it's getting into winter here now, and the days are getting shorter, obviously. So I thought by starting at four o'clock in the afternoon, we'd have kind of a nice hour and a half or so of really nice light. But when you're shooting in the city, <laughs> here in Tokyo, there's lots of big buildings that cut out that sunlight pretty quick. So by the time it was like 4.30 or so, or we were just kind of finishing up around 4.50 in that, almost five o'clock, we really had almost no natural light in the spot we were shooting. So I was bringing my shutter speed way down and I was actually shooting at 1 15th of a second, which is quite a lot slower than I would normally be comfortable going. And the images look great. They're nice and sharp and they're in focus. So the internal stabilization really helped out here. And I'm sure in a lot of situations, it's something I would use a lot. So yeah, in the end, uh, our portrait session was great. You know, I used my Z 85.18, which is great. I also threw on my F mount 105 1.4, which is a lens I love. Worked great as well. I even threw on my manual vintage 50 millimeter 1.4. Camera's new options that it has for manual focusing helped out a ton, so that was great. And in the end, the images looked great and I had a great time. It is full frame, so that's great. 
but it's not as big as say my Z9 or things like that. So maybe for professional work and things like that, I might still lead to my Z9. This is definitely not a replacement for my Z9, but as a second camera and something that I could have, say like I have a long lens on my Z9 on the side, shoot action, and then there's some people freaking out in behind in the stand. So I bring up the ZF, take some portraits or candid shots with it and do like that kind of like thing is something I really want to do when I'm out shooting events in the future. Yeah, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below. Lots of subscribers lately. So thanks a lot, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.